Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So it is time again for another front garden tour. So on my channel every month I do a front garden tour and I do a back garden tour with the goal to document the progress of my garden throughout the year. So I'm so excited. We're in October right now and I am almost done with the year and so hopefully my plan is, is to stitch all these videos together so that I can get a good view of what my garden looks like from January all the way through December. So this month, my garden is looking good. Things are starting to kind of wind down a little bit. We have gotten a wonderful, much needed break from the heat and the flowers and plants are absolutely loving it. So I'm starting to see actually a lot more blooms than I saw in August and September. So I'm definitely enjoying that. However, you can see some things are starting to be done for the season. I've actually cleaned a lot up already. I still have a ton of cleaning to do but it is so enjoyable to work out in the garden when it's this temperature. I think today the high is going to be 75, which is glorious. So let's get started with the front garden tour. All right, so just turning around right here, I have to say I am absolutely loving this white vinca. It is starting to slow down a little bit. It used to be just the sea of solid white, and now I'm starting to see a little bit more green, but look at how much these guys are growing. They are so happy, and they started off in those little six packs, so they were tiny little plants. This is, this is one whole plant right here, and they should be, according to what I've heard from from people is that they should be perennials in my area. So I'm just planning to leave this whole swath of white vinca here next year, and I'm excited to see how it's gonna look. You can see right here, I have my Arborvita Danica. It died. <laughs> It's dead. Um, I planted it in the middle of a heat wave in the middle of summer. That was my mistake. I know I shouldn't have done that. But my mom, my mother lives up in Redding, California, and her local nursery had a 40% off fall sale. So she grabbed me one of these Arborvitae Globosa. Um, I'll put the common name down here. Um, I think it's called Golden Globe Arborvitae. So I'm planning to plant that right there as soon as I get some time because I really did love the Arborvitae mixed with the Vinca. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. You can see over here, my limelight hydrangeas are done. I don't mind having them up, you know, once that they've, they've kind of faded like that. I still think it's kind of pretty and it's kind of fallish. So I tend to leave them up. You'll see over there, I have another one of the limelight hydrangeas um, where they're done as well. Usually limelights don't turn red or pink for us. If you live in an area where it gets cold enough overnight, your limelights will actually fade to a pinky color before they they hit this brown color. Mine usually goes straight from the white to this brown color just because we don't get cold enough at night. Um, and then I do have my Helen Von Stein lamb's ear that is getting eaten alive because this time of year is when the slugs and the earwigs start to come back out and they are, they are going crazy for my lamb's ear this year, which is not a big deal because you can just pull off the leaves that they've eaten and I will put some sluggo on them. Um, but yeah, they're just going Going absolutely crazy and even in my backyard they're attacking the lambs here that I've planted in my backyard as well. Right behind that, I have my whole row of Mystic Spires Salvia that I absolutely love, and I've scared them all away right now, but it's normally covered with pollinators. Not only bees and butterflies, but hummingbirds have been all over these as well. And I think because it's just a plant that blooms from spring all the way to first frost, so it's a constant source of nectar for these pollinators, and I absolutely love it. I will always have this plant in my garden. If I turn around right on the other side of this walkway, you can see my limelight primes. And my limelight primes, they are, they're kind of known for getting more color than the regular limelight hydrangeas. And you can see they have, they're a tinge pinker. They're still on their way out like the regular limelight hydrangeas, but I do absolutely love this. And you can, it, it does have some color on it. It's very, very beautiful. So I have one there and sorry about the 
panning, but I do have one over there. I have here, I have my English Ivy espalier, and then I have, we put little bats up all the way through. You'll see we are completely decorated for Halloween right now. Um, it's been fun. It's been fun, but you know, I feel like whenever I put decorations up, it's, it, takes away from my plants. <laughs> so, you know, it's, I'll take them down in November. And then of course in December, I'll put my Christmas decorations up. So moving along this way, you can see my Wichita blue juniper is completely covered with cobwebs. Thanks to my daughters. I actually love it. I think it's really cute like that. Um, it's such a focal point right here, uh, kind of by our front door. So I think that it's perfect to decorate like that. I do have my annual he heliotrope right here, my common heliotrope. It smells so, so divine. I think that because the temperature has kind of cooled down a little bit, this one and then also the surefire rose begonia have loved the cooler weather and they have bloomed and they're smelling beautiful and I'm just really enjoying it. But I will show you, look at this earwig damage. So, you know, it is what it is. I, I know they're coming whenever it gets a little bit cooler, you know, and the plants start enjoying the cooler weather, the earwigs, the slugs, and the snails <laughs> start enjoying the weather as well and start coming out and chomping on everything. Right over here, I do have my trio of fall annuals from Proven Winners. These are looking absolutely gorgeous, looking so beautiful. I have Osaka white cabbage. I have a bunch of pansies. This is a Morgana red garden mum that is coming into its own. It took a little while for it to bloom. When I was sent these, they didn't even really have buds on them, which I kind of enjoyed because I had this Catelli bronze garden mum over here and those were looking beautiful in the beginning, but now as those have faded, the Morgana red is starting to, to show its true colors. So I'm really, really enjoying it. I have the snapshot orange snapdragons and the Kilos atomic, uh, atomic fire violet. Kilos atomic fire violet coxcomb is looking beautiful. And then of course the creeping Jenny as my spiller for this trio of pots. All right, so over here, here's my front door, all decorated for Halloween. You all have seen this. The mums, I've already taken this mum out. This mum I need to take out. I kind of like it dead <laughs> right there because it's kind of Halloween-y, like a dead plant. I don't know, maybe I'm just <laughs> making excuses for leaving a dead mum there, but I just, I'm, I'm okay with it there for now. I did harvest my broom corn from my cut flower garden. I did grow this corn, broom corn. It's an ornamental corn. I grew it from seed. I think I was a little late planting it though because I was hoping that it would dry and it would get that wheat color. And you can see it's not, it's still green when I had to harvest it and you, and that made it a little bit uh, flexible and, you know, not straight up, but I don't care. I'm still enjoying it. I know I can go, you know, to the pumpkin patch and get these for five bucks each, uh, you know, and, and not worry about it. But I just love the fact that I've grown them myself. Um, it just, it just makes me proud to look at it. So this is my Halloween decoration for my front porch. We did put some Christmas lights up, but you can see they are not working properly. <laughs> so that's one of the things that I have to do is I have to go out and I have to get new Christmas lights for the holiday season because I don't want half working Christmas lights up for our Christmas decorations. So I have to do that. Over here, I have my fall window box that I absolutely have been enjoying so, so, so much. So this is the Catelli Bronze Mum. It's almost on its way out, which is okay. You know, I knew that they weren't gonna last very long. Here is the Henry III or Henry III Purple Aster, which is absolutely beautiful and it is a perennial in my area. So I will be planting that out. I think I'm going to plant it on my side yard over by my new honeysuckle arch. I think that that will be really, really beautiful there. And then um, this is a black olive hookra that I'm also going to be transplanting as well. I'm sorry it's a little dark. It's just, it's kind of a dark day. Um, you know, it, it, everything's getting light later and it, it's just, it's getting to that time of year. It's just starting to get dark. 
Underneath the flower box, you can see I have my hostas that I'm about ready to cut back. They're about done. Um, I do have my ostrich fern that I'm going to cut back as well. That's completely normal for it to start dying back like that. Um, it is a deciduous fern, and so I will I will completely cut it down. Some people say leave it and um, don't cut the fronds back until the spring so that all the dead can protect the crown. We don't get that cold here, and this is a really protected area, so I just want it to look clean. So I will probably come in and I will cut the whole thing back. I did want to show you my cyclamen. Look at this cyclamen right here. It's getting huge. This one right here is white and it's starting to bloom for me. And then I have another one over there that's white that's starting to bloom as well. So I love cyclamen. I have to say they just do so incredibly well for me. And every cyclamen that I have in my garden, they were at one point an annual that I had in either a flower box or a pot and then I transplanted them out as a perennial because they're perennials in my zone and they just bloom for so long for me and they do so well. So if you live in the same zone, same area that I do, try cyclamen in your garden. They, they just do so well for me. I'm just loving them. Okay, and then just outside the gate, I wanted to show you all this little garden bed that I cleaned up and am very proud of. I love it when I can take one small area and just make it exactly how I want it and then, you know, put a big check next to it and say, okay, it's done. So what I did here over the last couple months, I had a bunch of these Southern sword ferns. They were really big, kind of taking over. And then behind it, I had a small star jasmine that wasn't growing very well. And my goal, just like I have this star jasmine here, it's coming up. It's gotten all the way to here. Sorry about my garage, messy garage. Just don't look at that. Um, this one has gotten so big and so I wanted to do another one on the garage so I can kind of bring it up and over the garage. I thought that that would be really pretty. But the star jasmine that I had there just wasn't doing very well. I realized it was because it wasn't getting enough water and now that I've planted this bigger one in and I've given it lots and lots of water, it's so much happier. That is one thing I will say about star jasmine that I've been realizing because I have so much of it in my garden. Star jasmine, at least in my area, likes water. And if you're suffering with it, if you're getting brown leaves or red leaves, or it's just not growing very well, make sure you give it enough water. Because as soon as I give mine water, they just take off and they go crazy. I'll show you another one over there that I've been having, I was having trouble with. Now that I bumped up, like basically doubled the water, it is growing like crazy. So this one, when I planted it, the top of the tendrils were just to here. So it's only been maybe a month or two, and I already had to put in more wire, more eye hooks for my espalier, and it's already growing even more. So it is definitely happy. I'm excited about it. I did cut back these southern sword ferns, and you can see the new fronds are already starting to come out. These guys, they're so cute when they start to come out. They kind of curl up like that. Um, the southern sword fern is a really good ferny type plant, right? Look at fern looking plant that does well in our heat as well. So um, these, they don't normally look like that. They will get much bigger. Here's a big one over here. You guys can see. There's a big one, so what it looks like mature. Um, but I just cut all of them back once I saw some new growth. Um, they have lots of water, they're nice and happy, and then I took out all the other plants here and replaced some mulch. I also did, um, oh, what is it called? A Victorian trench, which is where you dig out right next to the concrete so that the the soil and the mulch can kind of go there so that it doesn't keep coming up and over the concrete. So I also did that. I should have filmed this, but I just kind of got out here and started working and it was kind of late in the evening, but I completely enjoyed myself and I'm so happy with how it turned out. Another area that I've been working on this month is the crepe myrtle garden bed. You can see my crepe myrtle still has its leaves. It will lose its leaves and I will have an absolute mess on my hands, but <laughs> I'm okay with that. But you can see I really cleaned out this garden bed. I decided to take out all the Superbina sparkling amethyst because it was kind of just done. I think the heat wave that we had back in, I can't remember if it was August or September at this point, um, but we had 10 days over 110 degrees temperature and I, it really did a number on this Superbina sparkling amethyst. A lot of them were still alive, but they were alive like as they had grown out. They had um, 
gotten new growth, but the ones back here were pretty dead. So I decided just to start over, took all of those out. I also took out my new look Dusty Miller, which I was, I was hesitant about taking these out. Um, but I'm glad I did because I can start over, start fresh and put something new in. So it's looking pretty empty at this point compared to what it normally looks like. Um, but I'm excited to put new fresh plants in. I did fix my lemon coral sedum border this month and I'm thinking, I just, I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. And then coming down here, you can see cyclamen. And then over here, cyclamen, cyclamen. I mean, they just, oh, they're so beautiful. I just love them all so much. And I have more plants kind of hidden in here that I think I can, I can see that they're going to start to bloom. And I just love them, you guys. I just love the cyclamen. So let's see. These I got from my local garden center, but these pink colors, these I actually found at Costco. So what I'm going to do later today is I'm actually going to go to Costco and see if they have any and then keep checking back. So if you all see cyclamen at Costco, because normally these plants, they're not cheap. You can get kind of like a four inch pot for $5, which is kind of an expensive annual. But if you get them at Costco, you can get the same size for $3 each. So let me know. <laughs> Remind me if you all see them at Costco. I'm going to be going weekly from now on just to see if I can get if I can get there when they first put them out because they sell out so quickly. The other thing I cleaned up in this garden bed is the calla lilies back here. I was planning to transplant these, move them to another area, and I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I just love them so much. I think they're so beautiful and they're so happy here. So this was one plant that I had over in my oak tree garden bed. I divided it into two and now they are two big plants. I could probably divide them again, but I'm just going to leave them for this year, let them be happy. I did clean up a bunch of stuff around here. I had a bunch of random stuff. I cleaned up a bunch of it. I am planning to plant a whole bunch of foxgloves in this area because they did so well. You can see I still have some more foxgloves back there that should bloom for me next spring. Um, and then I did take out my purple lantana, which I had been talking about wanting to take out because it hid this landscape rock right here. And I just think that this is a feature that I don't want to hide with plants because it's such a, you know, like we don't have much of this hardscape features in our gardens, right? So when you do have something really cool like that, I want to show it off. So I didn't put this rock in, um, the, the people who sold us our house, they, you know, did most of this hardscaping around here and they put this landscape rock in of, along with a couple more. And I just want to feature it. So my plan is to get some really low growing, maybe like elfin thyme or something like that, or even maybe bring this lantana further over here. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy that I took out that purple lantana because I think it just wasn't the right plant for this spot. Now coming over this way, I have nothing to show you <laughs> in my cut flower garden because it is all cleaned out. All the summer plants have come out. I just decided, to, you know, I could have left them in. I could have trimmed the zinnias back, you know, and gotten some more blooms out of them, but I just decided to take it all out. And then I'm planning to amend the soil this week. I'm trying to get my soil tested um, to see if there's nutrient deficiencies or anything like that because I had so much trouble with my sunflowers this year and honestly my dahlias as well. I had such trouble with them um, and I just want to make sure that the nutrients are all good in this garden bed before I start planting more things. But time's kind of running out. I do want to get my fall planted cool flower method um, seedlings out probably last week of October, first week of November. So in like a week. So I need to either amend it this week or add compost this week or or I don't know. I need to do something with it, but it's empty, it's cleaned out, it's all ready to go. Isn't this looking good? I have to say with the cooler weather, the blooms, they just they get brighter, they get happier, and I just love coming out here and looking at this, especially in the morning. I think it's so so beautiful. All right, so moving on this way, you can see there's leaves everywhere that I have to come out and pick up. I have, this is the other side of my lemon coral sedum border. It's looking really, really good. I'm absolutely loving it. I ended up purchasing these lemon coral sedum. I got one of you 
told me, look at Home Depot. Home Depot has them for sale. And they did because I was having trouble finding more lemon coral sedum. Most of mine died in that you know, 10 day heat wave we had, which was completely understandable, but I did find them at Home Depot and I'm pretty sure Home Depot gets their plants, their Proven Winners plants through Proven Winners Direct. So I'm really happy with them. I did miss out or, or I did lose a couple of them, a few of them, uh, but most of them are doing really, really well. Here is the other Limelight Hydrangea. This one still has a little bit of color on it, a little bit of green, which is pretty, um, but most of it's kind of fading and kind of finishing out. So coming up my stepping stone pathway, you can see that I did put some of the extra lemon coral sedum kind of around the stepping stone pathway. I'm really excited for that to kind of grow out and to kind of frame the pathway. That was my daughter Shay's idea, which I thought was a fabulous idea. I did come through and I cut back all my dahlias because they were just looking so messy and not happy. And I, it just was a bad year for my dahlias. I don't know what was going on. I don't know if they just didn't get enough water or it was too hot or, or what, but I just had such trouble with the dahlias this year. And, you know, I had big high hopes for there being a bunch of color, just dahlias all lined up along this fence. And it just didn't happen that way. And that is okay. That's all right. So all I did is I just cut them back. And then my plan is, is I'm actually going to leave them in the ground this year. And I've never actually done that because I do follow a dahlia grower from, I think they're from San Santa Cruz, which is the same zone that I'm in. And um, they actually pull their dahlias every year, even though you can leave dahlias in the ground here in zone 9B. They pull them every year just so that they can check them, they can divide them, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I've always done that. This year, I just I gave up. I'm leaving them in the ground. And then when I don't see growth in the spring, I will, I will fill in the spots with new ones. What I'm planning to do very soon is I have some, um, sweet peas growing. I think it's Mrs. Bolton. I'll put a picture up right here. Um, that's the variety I'm going to do. So I need to go get like a tea post or a steak and kind of bring some of that Hortonova netting all the way across here. And I'm going to plant a whole bunch of sweet peas right here. So in the spring, particularly during my um, my Pence Gallery garden tour, I will have, hopefully I will have a beautiful wall of pink sweet peas here. And I think that that will be absolutely beautiful. Coming this way, here is that star jasmine I was talking about. Earlier this year, I did a video on how I was having so much trouble with the star jasmine. It was really struggling. It wasn't growing. I didn't know what was happening to it. And I landed on two problems. One, chlorosis. So I had been treating it with iron, and I think that that definitely helped. And two, getting enough water. And I have to say, I think the water was key. I basically doubled the water. And as soon as I did that, I have so much more growth. It probably tripled in size since I did that. I'm even starting to kind of weave it around the fence like this. It is planted over here in the corner and it's just loving its life right now. So again, star jasmine, if you're having trouble with it, make sure you're giving it enough water. All right, so turning around from my star jasmine, this is another area I've been working on quite a bit. Hummingbird, can you see? Oh, two. Okay, so this is Salvia Lucantha or Santa Barbara Salvia. This is the white version and it is absolutely coming into its prime this time. Over in my oak tree garden bed around the corner, um, let me zoom out. Over in the oak tree garden bed around the corner, uh, I have the purple version, which I will show you, and it's absolutely looking gorgeous, gorgeous as well. But I've done a lot of transplanting this area and a lot of planting um, just to kind of fix the area up. I did have a bunch of gladiola all right here, and I decided that I didn't want that because the gladiola, when it was blooming, it absolutely looked gorgeous, beautiful. But when it wasn't, the leaves, the foliage were a mess. So... <laughs> I just thought that it would be better just to pull it. I ended up planting three uh, Spanish lavenders right there. So those are gonna be beautiful in the spring. They're still blooming right now. Um, but they're really, they're gonna come into the, to, 
come into its own in the spring. And then I did transplant one, two, three, four, five of my sparkling rosé superbina from my backyard where it wasn't getting enough sun and moved it to the front yard. Now I did cut most of them back um, just to help with the transplant process, but I left these just so that we could see what the blooms look like. And I can tell this one is already happier having more sun. So I'm hoping that they will grow together and we'll have this, you know, big swath right here of this sparkling rosé. Right here, this crazy guy, this is Bob. <laughs> he is part of our Halloween decoration. So we are in a Halloween house decorating contest. This neighborhood down here, they are so cool. So we moved into this house in January of 2020. So you know that was the time around the pandemic and everybody kind of shut everything down. And that included all the neighborhood events that I guess normally went on around my neighborhood that I had absolutely no idea about. So this is the first year that we are really really joining in in these neighborhood events. We had a neighbor's night out event where the whole neighborhood came together and basically had a block party just down the street. You guys, it's been so much fun. I had no idea what I was missing out just because, um, just because we moved here in 2020. So I just, I love my house. I love my neighborhood even more just because they all do this type of stuff. I actually am leading a, um, Halloween parade for the kids on Halloween, which I'm so excited about. And that is the same time that they will give out the awards for the Halloween decoration. So that's why we have all this Halloween decoration going on. And I do have my monster, which might have lost an eye. No, he still has an eye. There we go. Um, <laughs> just because I have been calling uh, this this uh, vertigo penicetum my monster plant. So of course we had to decorate him as a monster for Halloween. So back over this way, just last week, I transplanted this Evolvulus Blew My Mind. Nothing to look at right now, but I think it will be really, really happy here because I do think it will get some more sun. Yes, it looks like the Santa Barbara Salvia is kind of taking it over, but you have to understand this Santa Barbara Salvia comes, it, it like doubles in size just about a month ago and then it starts blooming. And then I will cut it back and then it will be a pretty small shrub for most of the year while the Blew My Mind Evolvulus XL can you know, go crazy and bloom all the time. Right next to that, I have some super tuna jazzberry that are definitely on their way out, but still looking pretty, still giving me some blooms. This guy, <laughs> this iceberg rose is quickly becoming one of my favorite plants, which I find that so funny because this is such a common generic plant in my area. Like, you know, they're, they're in parking lots, you know what I mean? But now that I have it in my garden, I see why they always plant it because it's so easy to take care of. I barely have to think about it. I have been enjoying the scent so much and it just keeps blooming its head off. I haven't even fertilized it. I do need to come in and fertilize it, but it is just loving its life. I love that it's kind of mixing in with this um, Mystic Spires Blue Salvia. I just think the combination is gorgeous. And then I am definitely going to plant something pink here next season. Um, probably a Supertunia uh, bubblegum because I think that pink, white, and purple combination will be gorgeous because I am just loving it like it is right now. All right. The sun is finally starting to come up and warm up things. I am enjoying that heat, the warmth of the sun. I have to show you all a little bit more Halloween decorations. We have a tombstone for this poor Shasta Daisy. I think when I go to the garden center next, I'm going to be keeping my eyes out for some more Shasta Daisies because I absolutely love them, but I did lose a couple in that heat wave. You can see this sparkling amethyst superbina. It did perfectly well in the heat wave, but the one over there in a a little bit more shade it did not do well okay let me see if i can get a little bit better view without the sun being in our face all right, so here is my annual border. It's still looking really, really good, which is surprising because I have actually stopped fertilizing, even though I should be fertilizing, I've just stopped. <laughs> just because it's that time of year when, you know, I know we all get tired, we all get, we have so many other things going on, so I haven't gotten around to fertilizing. I will show you the effects of that on some of the leaves on one of the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry over there. But you can see, everything's still looking really good. When we had the heat wave, 
believe I had the Snow Princess Lobularia. It literally disappeared. It was absolutely gone. I thought it died. You can see it didn't die. <laughs> it's so beautiful. As soon as it cooled down a little bit, it came back and it's thriving. It's almost taking over the Super Tunia Jazzberry. So I am actually hoping to leave that in here for winter and add a little bit more. I am planning to put in um, a mix of daffodils uh, bulbs for here and then I want to overplant them with some uh, sweet alyssum or, or uh, snow princess lobularia. So I think that that will be really pretty and I'm happy to see that it's so happy right now um, because hopefully I can just leave those plants in there. If you come over this way you can see this plant here. One, I think this plant is getting too much water, right? So I do have to back off on the water. But two, when you see your super tuny leaves start to look like this, the opposite of dark green, <laughs> kind of a sickly yellow green, that is a sure sign that it needs more food. It needs more fertilizer. So if I have time this week, I will come out and I will fertilize, but I'm just not too worried about it. You know, things are starting to kind of calm down a little bit. Um, it, you know, it's not really my focus anymore. So um, I will be pulling these pretty soon. I don't know when, maybe in a month or something like that. Um, so yeah, so this is what it looks like when you need to fertilize your super tunias. Okay, and then right behind that, I do have my beautiful road narrow sign that I have this purple hyacinth bean growing on. I, I haven't had to actually trim it, but I have had to stick a rake up there and pull everything off to the side so it's not covering the sign. It's worked really, really well. I'm happy with it. Um, it's not really blooming anymore. I don't know if you guys can see that with the lighting, but I am getting the gorgeous seed pods, the purple seed pods, and I cannot tell you how many neighbors have stopped by and commented on them and I've given them their own seeds I think here we go so if you go like this this one's almost ready but you look for the seed pods that look like that and then you just crack them open and then there's your seeds for the purple hyacinth beans so these are ready to go for my neighbors there we go there's a seed ready to go I'll put it right here just in case any of my neighbors want it <laughs> All right, and then a couple more transplants that I just wanted to point out. Over here, I have this Unplugged So Blue that I transplanted from my flower box over on my side yard. That's actually looking really good. It is inundated by aphids and white flies, and so I'm kind of just waiting for it to get cold enough for them all to just die, right? <laughs> and all the leaves to die. But the plants here, even after the transplant, are doing really well. And I did do root washing on these plants. I have some lantana over there, and then I have some Unplugged Pink over there. I did root washing on all three of these plants. They all look really good. Root washing is where you, instead of taking, you know, as much of the root ball as you can, you actually clean off all the soil in between the roots um, so that when you transplant the plant, the plant can have the new native soil. It's a complete mess. It takes a lot of work, um, but it's a new theory for transplanting plants to make them work uh, or, you know, uh, root in a little bit better and so I wanted to try it out. I will link that video below. Right next to that I planted some homestead verbena this month. I love this stuff. It's not much to look at but if you ever find homestead verbena if you live in a hot zone like I do and you see homestead verbena at the store grab it because it is so hardy. It is so wonderful and it has these beautiful purple colors at a time where in the spring where not a lot of other stuff is blooming. That's one thing that I remember about my homestead verbena is that it brought out, I think it was like early April, I want to say, but it brought out color when I really, really wanted color. These guys get about two to three feet wide and I just love them. So I kind of want this whole space to be this purple homestead verbena. This guy is obviously coming out. Well, not obviously. This guy is coming out as soon as Halloween is over. Like I want to say the day after Halloween, I will try to take this thing out. Jason, I'm definitely going to have Jason come and help me. And then I do have my redbud tree. I don't know if you can see it. It's over on my driveway and I am planning to plant my Oklahoma redbud right here. And I am so, so excited to get it in. All right. And then finally over here in my side yard, there's not too much to see over here. Here in my town, my city Davis, um, 
there's certain times of the year where they let us put all our green waste into the street and then they will come around with this little tractor thing and they will scoop it all up and it is so fantastic i absolutely love that about my town so the plumbago is looking absolutely gorgeous here the cut like i said with the cooler weather the color of the blooms are just popping it's like a fluorescent blue i love it i don't know what i'm gonna do about this plumbago though because I don't know if you can tell, but I do have a tutor in there somewhere. And my idea was to limit the growth of this plumbago to make it a little bit more controlled. You can see that hasn't happened. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. It just looks like one big shrub at this point. Um, and that's not really what I want right here, right next to this rose arch. These are my Eden climbing roses that are doing fantastic. Um, I want something a little bit more refined right here. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's always hard. You don't want to take out a plant that's obviously thriving. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to take it out, honestly. So over here, I have my two Mexican hydrangea plants. My birch tree is definitely dropping all its leaves. So you can see it's kind of a mess over here. But you can see right here, I have a bud. I have some buds and a new bloom starting on this Mexican hydrangea, which I'm super, super excited about. I think it's absolutely the perfect spot for it. And I am I am actually growing um, kirigami pale yellow columbine seeds indoors. They're not not germinating very well at all and Wendy one of you you sent me some more columbine seeds and I'm having so much trouble germinating those as well so if any of you have tips on germinating columbine seeds let me know but my plan is is to put columbine all around here um, and I think that it will be a perfect spot for it speaking of perfect spot I purchased this limelight hydrangea actually from my mom and I purchased it right in the summer and as I was in my sitting in its can in my backyard it completely scorched. So we ended up buying a different one from my mom and I planted this one. It is so incredibly happy here. I'm tempted to just do a hedge of limelight hydrangeas right here which I won't do because I took out a hedge of plumbago back here because I wanted to put other things in. But look at how happy this plant is. So I don't even know if I can find the places it was it had scorched leaves on it it was it was not a happy plant we didn't even bother putting it in my mom's garden but look at how good it looks it is just thriving I've done nothing to it I planted it and then I just let it go so this is a perfect example right plant right place <laughs> right lighting right water it is just it is so happy here and i can't wait for it to keep growing and growing and growing because i think it's going to be a showstopper i do have this mess of junior walker nepeta which i think is gorgeous and beautiful i think i might have overplanted just a little bit i think i maybe put 10 plants in here totally totally not necessary <laughs> but that's okay it'll be really pretty once it's blooming uh, my girls and I, we do have plans for doing a fall fairy garden if we get to it. Things have just been so busy. It's soccer season and all that kind of stuff. So we do have all the stuff. We just have to come over here and do it. And then here is that purple salvia leucantha. You can see it actually kind of fell over. We had quite a windy day yesterday. So I have a feeling that it fell over during that wind. And then you can see back here is my oak tree garden bed. I have all these weeds back here and I'm not sure what they are. If you guys know what seedlings these are, let me know. I haven't been able to identify them yet. I should get my identifier app out, but I don't think I've ever seen these weeds or I don't know if they're seedlings from flowers I had back here or weeds, but um, they're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. <laughs> so I kind of want to know what it is because if it's something that I want, then I'm going to just leave them, right? Because obviously they're happy here. They're growing everywhere. If it's something I don't want, then I will come out here and I will weed everything. But this is this beautiful, majestic oak tree that we have. I share it with my neighbor. And um, we wanted a drought-tolerant um, 
garden bed back here that could handle not having a bunch of water because you don't want to overwater underneath an oak tree. So that's what all these plants are focused on um, is that is making sure that there's not too much um, water that these plants don't need too much water. And so far, I think it has worked perfectly. It is more of a natural look garden bed, which is, you know, completely fine. Most of my garden doesn't really look like that, but I think it fits in really, really well here. And I can see everything is thriving and super happy, even with the amount of water that I'm giving it. All right. So that is it for my October front garden tour. Stay tuned for later on this week when I'm going to do my back garden tour for October. Um, things are looking good back there. I've added a bunch of new stuff, but of course it's slowing down. The season's slowing down. I'm actually really happy about that. You know, I get tired at this time of year and there's so much school stuff. And like I said, soccer stuff and holiday stuff going on, you know, it's okay to slow down a little bit in your gardening season. I have to say being out here, I actually am cold. <laughs> it's just like the first day that I've actually been cold outside. So I think it's time to start getting out all my winter clothes, my sweatshirts and all that kind of stuff. So I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope it was motivational for you and I hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today. Oh,